Welcome to YWAM Tyler's audio podcast. Thanks for tuning in, and we hope this episode will be fun, interesting, and also beneficial for you. Every episode of this podcast will be different with teachings, interviews, and devotionals. It's about missions, it's about people, and it's about the heart of God. This is an exciting time in which we live, and God is active all over the globe. Youth of the Mission has been partnering with God for the last 50 plus years. YWAMTyler.org. That's the place to go if you want to find out more about us and how you can get involved with God's dreams for His world. Thanks again for tuning in, but let's not wait any longer and dive right into today's episode. All right. Well... Again, for those who know me, if you give me a microphone, you're typically going to hear something about what God's doing around the world. Can anyone tell me the approximate world's population today? Not this day, but very close. I just looked it up because I knew I'd be challenged on this. 7.5 is what Ed says. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, as of this month, there we have it, 7.13 billion people in the earth and we're growing now bear with me this is going to get a little bit technical this is one of my favorite web pages that I go to often it's called Joshua Project I know there's a lot of information here but I'm just going to point out one or two things you guys can check this out because it's very interesting follow over here on the text There are 16,804 different and distinct people groups in our world today. I don't know if you knew that. If you melt down groupings of people by language, culture, customs, location, and geography, you melt it all down, you get 16,800 different distinct peoples. Okay? You guys, this is new information in the sense of just the last 10 years or so that we have access to this kind of information. Over here, I put an arrow. You see this little flesh-colored arrow? This is saying, right here is is the number for those that may not be able to see it in the back. With that, though, we need to ask ourselves, of the 16,800 different people groups, 72 or almost 7,300 are still unreached. Unreached. Now, using this lingo, let me tell you what that means. Simply, the gospel is not available. About 40% of the world's population does not have access to Jesus. They don't have access to a church, to a missionary, to a radio transmission, to a television show, to scripture portions, a Jesus film. They have no access to the one we love. You following me? This is this number right here. The team, Joshua Project, they track this every day. This number is not set. It is always fluctuating. You know this number of people groups? This number changes. As missionaries report in, they're still discovering people groups in this day and age, if you can believe it. In the Amazon region. I go to Sudan every year. You know what? YWAM found a people group in Sudan. Outside the Nuba mountain range. People that lived in an isolated valley way, way back up. And now YWAMers are going there. Taking the gospel and medicines and preaching to them. And helping them with water projects. Many of them are getting reached. But anyway, I personally have a problem with this statistic. This bothers me. In this day and age, why is 7,300 people groups unaffected by the gospel? I'm, I'm a Texan now. I vote Texan. I pay tax in Texas. This is my home state. Did you know that in the state of Texas, one state right here, There are 1.6 million Christians. And today, 
1.6 million Christians that attend over 9,000 churches. Today, many Texans went to these 9,000 churches. Now you say, why do you say that? Well, let me flip back to the last slide. There are 7,300 unreached peoples, but here in Texas, we have 9,000 churches. Dream with me. If a church, one Texas church, would say, we need to change that statistic. How about we begin to pray about one people group? Just one. We begin to pray. Maybe we can raise up a team. Maybe we can send some of our medical personnel and do an outreach. Maybe we can do a water project if they need that. And I bet... With a focused effort by that church over a couple years, they could reach a people group. Is that doable? It is so stinking doable. And you guys, you know what? I'm not talking about all of America or all of Christendom. I'm talking about us Texans. We can change this statistic, I think, in a very short time. Amen? It is so doable. I also heard someone say once, information is dangerous because once you know it, you're responsible to it. So, oops, I just made you aware of some very important information. And it's not just mine that I'm pulling out. You guys do your research. It's all here. We're going to refer to this pie chart. I know that's a little bit more technical, but you'll see what I mean when we get into this skit. Let me explain it first of all because you'll, hopefully it'll make sense. This represents the world the population of the world. And basically, if you melt it down, it melts into three parts, and they're almost even, like one-third each. This green area would be the area that we would consider ourselves. This is the established church. Christians, evangelicals, believers, okay? Over here in the red is some of what we were just talking about. The unreached those who do not have access to Christ. And then there's this yellow group called the formative church. There's many titles in missiology circles that they give this, but this would be those who have the gospel accessible to them, but have chosen to refuse it. Do you understand what I mean? If they wanted Christ, they could reach out and receive him, but they choose to ignore or for whatever reason, do not want to partake in the gospel. So here we are. Are you seeing it? This is our world today. This is our mission effort. This is our, those who have a walk with the Lord and so on. But there's something missing in our world today. There's something that we claim to be in this room, but is not yet brought into this skit. What's miss missing in our world today? As somebody said it. Missionaries. I need 10 missionaries to come right up here right now. 10 missionaries. Come on up, volunteers. Who wants to be known as a missionary? One, two, three, four, five, six, four more, seven, eight. You guys, here's our missionaries. To the reached part of the world, most mission efforts are coming to this group, believe it or not. So seven of my missionaries need to be over here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Seven out of ten missionaries serve in the reached part of the world. Okay? I need two missionaries to be with the nominal formative church. What's going over there? And you guys, where's our missionary here in the white shirt? What's your name, brother? Orzun. Orzun is the only lone missionary called to the unreached part of the world. This is a realistic picture of the distribution, the efforts of missionaries in our world today. Actually, the truth is, I would have to cut off that brother's head and only leave one-fourth of him with this people group because actually about one-fourth of one person in this skit would be called to the unreached peoples of the world. You guys, I think this is a crime. Now, I love that we have missionary efforts going amongst the reached, and the nominal. But I think it's out of balance. Amen? 
I think we need to see this and consider that if we really are going to complete the Great Commission, we're going to have to do something about the unreached peoples of the world. Are you seeing this? Now, when it comes to finances, in my little bag here, can you hear it? I have 100 pennies, okay? 100, 100 pennies, which represents 100% of mission giving. Mission giving is a lot like mission personnel. You know where the majority of it goes? Over to the reached part of the world. I'm not going to dump it all out, but you guys, about 75% comes to this group. If 75% is over there, 24% comes to this group. Do you want to know what's left over for the unreached part of the world regarding missions giving? A penny, but not really. It's a little less than half a penny, you guys. Of all the monies given, less than half a percent, about one-third of a percent, ends up going into the unreached part of the world. Shame on us. Shame on us. I'm talking to the body at large. You know that America spends 10 times more on dog food than we do on missions. I know I'm preaching to the choir here. You guys are generous. But I just want you to know what's going on. 10 times more on bubble gum than missions giving. And the mission giving that does come in, praise the Lord for it, less than half of a cent ends up going to the unreached. You guys, I feel like something needs to change here. Are you with me? This is my last slide. Some words of Jesus. John 4 says, they came out of the town and made their way towards him. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, could have someone brought him food? Jesus, knowing their thoughts, he just replied saying, my food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me. And look at this. And to finish his work. Do not say for Months more, and then the harvest, I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields, for they are white unto harvest.